Well, Frendo is one of Santa's most important scouts. It's a lie! <laughs> Well, I guess it's a tradition now. It is official. Disney is going to annually put out an animated Diary of a Wimpy Kid movie on Disney Plus every December. It has started back in 2021, and now it looks like it's going to continue on until God knows when, because I know for a fact that there have been so many Diary of a Whippy Kid movies, and who knows if Disney is going to go and plan on adapting every single one every year. And I, for one, am not really that excited for it. Now, before I go and get things started onto our actual subject, let me just go and make a clarification about my thoughts on the last two movies, because I have previously discussed about the other two animated Diary of a Wimpy Kid movies before. Now, I have seen the first film, and honestly, that was actually my first experience in terms of Diary of a Wimpy Kid in general. I came in without watching any of the live action movies or read any of the books. Like, that was my first experience. It was like, my, my initiation to Diary of a Wimpy Kid. And while I didn't necessarily think it was that good of a movie to begin with, I do understand. Like, I saw the charm and I saw why is it that Diary of a Wimpy Kid did have a fan base. Like, okay, now I get, like, why is it people really did get into it, especially during the height of the book and the movie's uh, popularity. Uh, but then the following year, I did watch uh, Roderick Rules, and honestly, that one just sucked. <laughs> that was honestly one where, like, yeah, a lot of the charm from before was just not there. Now that I am a little bit familiar with the whole, like, formula with Diary of a Wimpy Kid, seeing the second one is just, like, it didn't feel good at all. Although I wasn't necessarily too harsh on it. I didn't view it too negatively because then again, it is still, after all, a direct to Disney Plus animated movie. So there wasn't necessarily a whole lot to go and expect in the first place. So yeah, take what you can get. And honestly, with Roger Rules, I didn't really get all that much. Which leads us to what we have right now with Diary of a Wimpy Kid Christmas Cabin Fever. And when I heard that Disney has announced that they were going to do that for December, oh man, honestly, I was upset. I was not happy that Disney decided to go and release that movie for the month of December. And it's not necessarily because of the fact that we're getting another animated Diary of a Wimpy Kid movie. It's not necessarily because of those films in general. I honestly would have been fine with Disney doing this. I would have been okay with them putting out another Diary of a Wimpy Kid movie so that I could go and do another review. That is not the issue at all. It's just that lately, in the last two months of 2023, they have been the most hectic and the most chaotic for me this year. Holy crap, it has just been way too busy for me, especially when I don't know why, but I guess all the studios have decided that almost half of all the animated features of 2023 would be released for the month of November and December. Like, it, it, and it was just so hectic, and it, it was honestly just very tough for me to try to go and catch up and to make sure that I pump out these reviews one after another, uh, especially when there are some of them that were also musicals, so that required extra work to go and talk about the songs. So, like, I ended up becoming a, a lot more busy than usual where I just had to go and, like, fill up my schedule with just work again and again and again and again and again. And on top of that, like, my life also became a lot busier, well, as much as everyone else's, because now the holidays are coming up, and then suddenly I have to go and, like, balance my life out, where I also gotta think about the holidays and to prep that up, and then at the same time, I have to also make sure that my personal health, like, 
gotta make sure I take care of myself during this entire experience, which, by the way, when it comes to the ladder, I was not doing a good job. In fact, there was actually a moment where suddenly, uh, while I was working on these reviews, like one after another, again and again, I suddenly ended up experiencing a burnout. Like, it was pretty bad to the point that my morale was low, I felt physically weak, where I just had to stop working for two days and then suddenly I felt the uh, energy coming back up to get back to work. But then suddenly, a few weeks later, guess what? I ended up catching COVID. So from there, it's just been chaos all around from November to December, one after another, just going from reviews to the holidays to other videos I gotta work with. There's just so many things that I have to balance and I'm not even doing that great of a job trying to do everything. And to put it all of that together and then suddenly Disney just decided to step in and they decided to say, oh, hey man, I see you're struggling with your life right now. Here, have Greg Hefley. Here's a new movie. Now get to work and add that to your godforsaken schedule. Anyways, uh, sorry for that rant there. It's just, uh, as you could probably tell, I went through a lot during November and December. And honestly, I just cannot wait until I could reach the moment where I feel like I can officially relax. And uh, what we are here, actually, it's not to listen to me rant about how my weeks have been lately because they haven't been that great. But we are actually here to go and talk about Diary of a Wimpy Kid Christmas Cabin Fever, Disney's latest animated movie that they have put out exclusively on Disney+. Plus. And uh, considering my hectic schedule that I had, uh, I did actually ask my audience, uh, I did put up a poll on YouTube regarding if people would actually want me to go and talk about Diary of a Wimpy Kid Christmas, if they want me to also include that onto my schedule. And uh, based on the poll, it looks like two thirds actually said yes and that they want to hear my thoughts on this movie. So I did change up my schedule in terms of what to release during December so that I would go and make room for this. And I guess, you know what, why don't we go and do this? I guess it'll count as uh, my holiday video for 2023 to go and discuss about Diary of a Wimpy Kid. But anyways, um, with, with all that said, let's actually go and talk about this movie. What is it this time around that we experience with uh, Greg Hefley and his little shenanigans? Well, it's actually interesting that despite the fact that this is the third animated Diary of a Wimpy Kid movie that Disney put out on Disney+, Plus. This time around, uh, this is actually based on the sixth book, Cabin Fever. They decided to go and skip ahead so that they can go and put out a Christmas movie. And this time around, uh, Greg Hefley is actually concerned about being good because especially in this time of year, there is the big rule that, well, Santa is keeping an eye on you to make sure that if you are good, then that's when you would go and actually get the good presents. And for Greg Hefley, there is one present in particular that he really wants, and that is this major video game console. And from there, uh, of course, the typical Greg Hefley mishaps would go occur. And there was at one point him and Rowley would go and make this giant snowball, which of course, with the classic wimpy kid traditions, mishaps ensue, and then suddenly the snowball would crash onto the uh, snow plow, and it actually broke the snow plow. And then uh, from there, Greg and Rowley would be worried if they would become criminals because of that. But uh, then, of course, one mishap would then lead to another where suddenly uh, they found themselves snowed in in... Uh, in their own home. So now uh, Greg would have to go and uh, try to make sure that he does his part to be good and make sure 
he doesn't get caught in the act of his uh, his accident that he ended up causing or else he would end up being in the naughty list and he wouldn't get his big console present that he wanted. While he has to endure his family, whom let's just say there is a reason why this is called cabin fever, considering that they have been stuck in their homes for several days without electricity. Yeah, things can go nuts for them uh, in terms of what's happening with their house and also with uh, what's happening to them mentally. Oh, I'm sure your mind is just playing tricks on you, honey. I, maybe you're going a little stir crazy too. I am not going crazy. That thing actually moved. Now, one thing that I will admit from all this is that when I came into this movie, I did not have any high expectations, especially uh, with how my days have been like a lot busier and how I felt like it's just unnecessary to go and add this onto my schedule. And uh, based on my opinions of the last two Diary of a Wimpykin movies that they have not been great. Yeah, I wasn't really enthusiastic and I was thinking, yeah, we're going to come into another piece of crap with this. But I was honestly very surprised, and I don't know, maybe it's because, like, this is some sort of Christmas miracle, but I feel like with this movie in particular, with Cabin Fever, it feels like the movie has a little bit of their things more in order, and everything feels a lot more premeditatedly elaborate than it was with the last two movies. Like, one thing that I have noticed is that Everything feels like they clearly connect to each other a lot better now. Like, it feels like with each of these events, they feel like they do have a little bit of a connection and how certain events can affect one after another. Even if there are some moments that suddenly just occur, like with the snowstorm or the electricity coming out. Like, these additions, like, they actually do play a key role onto the story. Like, now they actually do play a role in terms of how they would affect uh, the characters, how they do affect the scenarios. Like, now this is a lot more elaborate, where the main problem is in regards to what happened to the snowplow, like, that whole incident, and that Greg Heffley is worried that his Christmas overall would be ruined because of that moment where he feels like whatever forces may be, like whether it be his family would go and find out or if Santa would go and find out or anything like that, he is worried if there's going to be something that would ruin his chances to go and get his video game console or he's just worried that, you know, everything would just like fall into pieces and that he would end up being labeled as this criminal because he did destroy government property. He destroyed an entire snowplow and even the film itself emphasized that like the worst case scenario would legit be that uh, Greg and Rowley would go into jail. We shouldn't even go back on our street. I can't go to jail. My parents would be disappointed in me. And honestly, this is a plus compared to how the previous two movies were because the goals of those didn't really seem all that great. And it didn't feel like uh, the connections were as strong as they used to. But in here, however, you could see how the consequences uh, can have greater effect. And I think that 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 is the best part about the story, at least, is how you see uh, the consequences are not just greater, but also uh, how they can have uh, an effect on several different components on uh, on on Greg's Christmas, on Greg's family, and it, and many more. You know, there there's like a lot that feels like is at risk with all these little things where. Ironically enough, you know, with my rant that I started out with, it really does feel like there's just so much that's being piled on. And throughout this entire thing, you're just worried that there's not one thing that might just topple over or else like everything would just implode in itself or everything would just like, you know, everything would just crash and burn. So it's all about making sure that each of these little things would work accordingly so that 
nothing would just be, you know, so so that everything can fall into place, everything can be fine, and that, you know, right at the end, everything turns out okay. You know, I honestly never thought that, like, with what's been happening uh, with my November and December would actually have some kind of connection with um, w- with the whole story about uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid Christmas. I, you know, it's just now that I realize that kind of connection. So I don't know, maybe the rants in my in, in my opening would actually have a point to this entire review. Who the fridge knows? <laughs> Uh, but anyways, um, and with the fact that there is more of this elaborate plan with the story, at the same time, I feel like there was a lot more of a plan with the characters themselves. Now, from there, I just want to go and make a clarification. These characters are still not necessarily that great in the first place. Like, we're not going to see, like, very complex characters, or we see them going to some very depth or, or, or in-depth or psychological development with them but what i do like is that they do give them this one trait and the movie does make the most to really play with them uh with each of these characters like uh, first off of course you do have greg hefley and i will admit i am not a fan of greg hefley whatsoever in these animated features because he is often presented as this very mean-spirited jerk But in this case here, you could tell that they actually did tone down a bit of the jerkiness, especially, well, technically, considering that this is all Christmas theme and that Greg Hefley is trying to map out his plan of trying to be nice, at least during the Christmas time, so that he could go and get his uh, video game. Now, I will admit at the start of this, it did feel like your typical animated Diary of a Wimpy Kid movie. It started out the same way as the first two movies usually would. And I will admit the enthusiasm for myself was like pretty low where it feels like, okay, I guess we're getting into another one of those movies then. But over time, that's not necessarily the case where we do see there is actually kind of this character arc with Greg where it becomes more like, yeah, he becomes worried about getting caught. Like that's always the main thing about him. But then over Over time, he then gradually learns about uh, the importance of Christmas and he learns about making sure things are okay with his family and that eventually he learns about like what truly is important uh, during the holidays. So you do see a little bit of an arc where, where Greg Hefley becomes less and less of a jerk and that he starts to care more about others. And that is honestly one thing that feels like it's been missing for a long time with these previous two Diary of a Wimpykin movies is that now, I I guess Greg Hefley kind of became like the Grinch where we see his heart gradually grow three times more where now suddenly it's it, it becomes less about being uh, this convict, where it's less about getting caught about his uh, snowplow incident and more about, uh, you know, about his family. It's more about Christmas. It's about, you know, making sure everybody can have a happy holiday. So that is actually one nice thing to see uh, that they have done with their main character and honestly one thing that i would say is the greatest accomplishment of cabin fever is that they did legit find a way to make greg heavily likable and then you got the others as well like you got rowley who is pretty much the same like he usually is in the last two films so there's not necessarily a whole lot to go and talk about where he's the goody two-shoes kid who always wants to make sure that he stays out of trouble, but he's Greg Hefley's uh, best friend and stuff like that. Uh, But then you have the other Hefleys, and I would say they also got a tremendous boost. Um, Like, their character traits in here, like, you could tell it is kind of, like, exclusive to Cabin Fever, but, like, even though, like, technically you could say they are one-dimensional, but... 
the movie does manage to find a way to make the most out of their one traits. So, like you got the mom who is really trying her best to like really get into the Christmas spirit and to you know, try to share it with all of her other family members, even though like a lot of what she would do doesn't necessarily work as much. And then she would also bring in her Christmas traditions that uh, the other family members are not really on board with, including that little gremlin that's like their version version of Elf on a Shelf that's constantly giving Greg Hefley stress because that, you know, th that, that, that elf for some reason is like the big symbolism of Santa is watching you and he knows about your evil deed that's going to put you on the naughty list. Uh, and then you also got the dad who becomes increasingly paranoid because he was the one that knew the most about the big storm that would eventually come. And then he's the first one to gradually grow cabin fever where he just becomes paranoid and it's almost like he's transforming into a character from the thing not like the monster itself but like one of the human characters who just becomes increasingly paranoid wondering who took the rations who took the last of this and all that kind of stuff like he's the one that is the most worried about survival no food no water no batteries no toilet paper how how could we have gone through everything so quickly and then you got uh Roderick whom he is a lot more focused on trying to capture uh the criminals because now there's actually some wanted posters about uh capturing the two mysterious people who broke the plow and there's this $500 reward and he's the one that is so focused on trying to find all the evidence needed in order to go and uh capture the criminals so like he was so dead set on trying to do everything he can even without electricity to find the evidence needed in order to go and actually uh get those criminals and get that 500 hundred dollar reward but it's just a matter of time before i find out what happened for sure what do you mean and then, of course, there was also Manny, which I guess I would say he's my least favorite because he's the one that is the most unapologetically a jerk throughout all this, like the most sadistic out of all of them and just really looking out for himself, even stealing all the rations so that he could be the one that like sur the, the the one that is like the most likely to survive. Yeah, like that. that, that can't, yeah, that little prick is just a jerk. I am not a fan of Manny. You can't see in here. This is my room. Well, I'm not sleeping in Manny's room. Something's not right with that kid. But yeah, and from that entire combination, it actually does result in some pretty fun moments where you do see uh, some enjoyable times where we see them really play around with these different types of characters and how they would go and interact with one another and how uh, they result in like this very chaotic moment of their time just staying at home uh, throughout this entire snowstorm. And I will admit that this also leads up to uh, some of the funniest moments in the uh, entire franchise so far of animated Diary of a Whippy Kid movies. Now, when I say funniest, I won't say that like these are legit laugh out loud funny, but I think the best way to describe it is that it doesn't necessarily make you laugh, but it does make you hate it less. Like you do appreciate that it tries something funny, that it tries something cute, and that even if you're not laughing, like, you can recognize that, okay, that is a bit amusing. So I think that's the best way to describe it, is that it's not funny, but it makes you hate the movie less. So I guess that could be something. But then you do have the animation. And in that regard, I think that's the one that changed the least in terms of the quality compared to the last two films. Because with Diary of a Wimpy Kid, uh, at least with the animated films, and I know I probably have said this uh, in my previous reviews of them, but it's still the same case in here where it is pretty minimal. And when I say minimal, I don't mean like, oh, this is a nice stylistic choice. Oh, this is actually uh, pretty cool. You know, it's pretty innovative with what they're doing. No, that's not what I mean. I mean minimal as in this is the most that the animation team can afford. This is not like Disney's many 200 or $300 million blockbuster features 
that they love spending. No, 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 no. This is the one that Disney decided to be a bit more frugal and they decided to go and give them a budget that at best can be comparable to a regular computer animated show. That's pretty much it. And I mean, considering that nowadays people are agreeing more that Disney doesn't necessarily need to go and spend like all that much money onto their big blockbuster films, I think it would be beneficial if some of that money instead can go a bit more onto these Diary of a Whippy Kid movie so that they can look better. But this is not necessarily to say that it looks bad per se. It just looks very basic. Like you do still have the same type of, uh, uh, of simple designs where it's just taking the drawings from Diary of a Wimpy Kid and then you would just bring them to life into a CG style, which in itself, it's like, okay, I get it. You know, they're trying to do a little bit like what uh, DreamWorks did with Captain Underpants, but it's like very scaled down in a way where like, honestly, it only works in a direct to uh, direct to home media kind of style. Like if this were like a big uh, uh, like a movie released in theaters. Yeah, that would be a bit of a problem. But I mean, like considering the budget that they have and it's like only released on streaming, I guess like, OK, well, it's I, I guess it's OK for what they have done. But the rest of it, it's it really is just plain like it's just your typical neighborhood. And like now this time around, they, they've added a whole bunch of uh, Christmas decorations. So in that regard, there's really nothing too special with the animation. Uh, but I will say that there are still other aspects where it does show where the animation is very limited and there, there's like no hope where they could go and make it good, especially with the snow. I don't know what consistency that thing is made of, but it doesn't have any of the physical, actual properties of snow. It always looks like mush for some reason. And that can be a problem, especially when uh, this is supposed to be this movie that is set in a giant snowstorm that is supposed to be set in the holidays where snow is everywhere and they want to try to do things like throwing snowballs and like there's even the one gag where Greg Hefley opens the door and like all the snow just piles onto him like it's just that the snow itself I don't know it just feels like it's like it's like white mush it's like I don't know. It's like white porridge. You know, it, it looks like something that it, it, you, you would normally eat and it doesn't taste good. And somehow the color is gone so that they would go and make it snow. I don't know. It's just that the consistency and the effects with the snow, it's just not great. And I think that's the most prominent example of how the animation is uh, a lot more on the weaker side over here. Like, I mean, yeah, sure. I know I said that there are some things that I could give it a pass, especially when this is just a direct-to-streaming animated movie. But in the case with the snow, it's just like, nah, man, it, it feels like, okay, that, that part right there, they didn't even try. You know, it, it's just that they, they don't necessarily have the budget or they don't have the right tools in order to properly animate snow. So this is what the team could really make the most out of. But I will say, speaking of making the most out of it, that is the one credit that I will give the animation team for. Even though the materials that they had for making this feature really not that admirable, I could see though that they are trying to make the most out of what they can do in order to make the scenes the most effective. The one good thing I will say with the animation is that it does have some pretty uh, some pretty decent uh, cinematography where the storyboarding is actually very effective in order to go and really, again, make the most out of every shot that they can do so that uh, the scenes are a lot more impactful or whatever they're trying to do, they can really make, um, they can really take advantage of just the camera angles or uh, just with what they are presenting. They, they really want to make sure that each scene is very effective, rather it be emotionally or in terms of like what they want to go and emphasize for that particular moment. And there are some times where like a lot of the shots can actually be fun and they actually do enhance the actual moments. Like one scene I will say is actually 
I was surprisingly fun to watch is actually during the opening right after we see the whole snowball incident that broke the plow. And then we see this chase scene where Greg and Rowley are running away from uh, the angry plow lady where they, you know, they're just going all around the neighborhood trying to hide from her. Uh, and like, it does feel like this pretty intense ch uh, chase scene. Uh, and they, they really did try to make the most where it feels like it is definitely action packed. And you could tell the danger, like some big consequences would occur if they would end up getting caught. So that was surprisingly fun to watch. Uh, and then the, another highlight that I would also say is in regards to whenever uh, they are stuck in the house and suddenly it's starting to really affect them mentally uh that's when you do see the moments where uh the care like uh the cinematography would go and highlight their psychological stance where you see it just slowly draining and they really try to make the most out of the moments where uh things are just really falling apart for the family because of this entire snowstorm so that's one thing that I will give credit to the animation and especially with what the animation team can do is that, yeah, like I said, even though the materials themselves are really not that admirable and they really feel like they are not much in order to go and produce a proper animated feature, they do try to make the most out of it in order to make the scenes be shot in a way that is the most effective you know that they try to capture the best mood of those moments so there was some effort in the animation in order to really make it as effective as they can do even though this is still an animated diary of a whippy kid movie and it's still not that much in the first place wait wait no no no, no stop stop oh, come on <sighs> But then there is possibly the best part of this picture and the one component that maybe there is a little bit in the first and the second film, but they really do not work to the point where it's kind of like unnoticeable that they would even have that component. But in here, not only do you actually see it, but it actually does work. And that is the heart. Because of course, as this is a Christmas movie, it would come with a Christmas message. And in this case here, it's about the importance of family. That they say that one of the best things about Christmas is to be with the ones you love and that you need to make the most out of your time with the ones you love because nothing is permanent and you got to make sure that you make the most out of your time with your family or with your loved ones uh, even if there can be times that they could just drive you crazy and this is why I, what I consider to be the best scene and by the way uh, before I continue I just want to give you all a little bit of a warning that I am going to be going into some spoiler territory territory so if you do not want to go and be spoiled by this moment then uh, I recommend you just skip to here and then you'll be good uh, but anyways back to what I was talking about what I consider to be the best scene of this movie is when Greg Heffley and the plow lady were driving to Greg's home where uh, Greg was about to get his uh, scarf and his uh, his red uh, toque. But uh, then the plow lady came in and, well, she didn't know that he's the one who caused all the trouble and stuff. So uh, she g gave him a lift to go back home. And during that whole time, they would go and have a chat about family. And when we get to really learn more about the plow lady herself, where she is actually of uh, a, a lower class, where she's one of those people where she only has her son and uh, she is actually dependent on donation drives in order to actually have a Merry Christmas, where she's one of those people who would actually need donations uh, in order to actually have presents or food and stuff like that. And that she, uh, being a uh, plow lady is only one of her jobs so that she can actually afford a living or she can afford the most that she can in order to have a roof over her head with her son. And it's actually this beautiful, heartfelt moment where not only that we get to learn about 
her side of the story, but also we learn about the importance of family. We learn about, you know, trying to make the most out of your time with them because you never know if in the future you won't actually have these moments where, yeah, sometimes like there are times with your family where it could be pretty frustrating, where it could be way too complicated. You know, it, it may not necessarily be a great time, but it's better that than like some of the circumstances where she would find herself in. And that's why it is more important to go and like make the most to be with your family and to cherish those moments at the same time. But boy, do I miss him now. Treasure every single moment you have with those people because nothing in life is guaranteed. Like I said, it is such a heartfelt moment. It is such a, a time where not only does it feel like a very reflective moment for Greg, but it's also a great message to go and pass on to the audience as well so that they could go and actually spend some quality time with their family. Like it even made me reflect upon uh, my own moments with my family where not everything can be perfect, but I am aware that it is important to make the most out of my time with them and that each moment uh, should be like a great one in order to have like as many happy memories as I can throughout my life. Um, and I know, I'll just say this right now. Yes, some people could argue that this is kind of a typical holiday message that, you know, you know, uh, the diary of a wimpy kid is not the only one who would go and say that. I know that there are plenty of other Christmas specials and holiday movies. They would go and deliver that message as well. Diary of a Wimpy Kid is not really that special. And I can understand the argument that the, the, the whole uh, movie is more or less kind of like the typical Christmas special. I do get that. But that doesn't change how in this case here in Cabin Fever, not only does the message work, it's also very beneficial in several other ways that it actually makes the characters, it makes the whole family more likable. It makes Greg more likable where he actually did take that to heart and it actually did create this... um surprisingly tender ending where like it, it actually turned out to be very nice like yeah kind of like a bit predictable but still it is very heartfelt it is actually very nice to see that kind of ending with how it ultimately turned out and how greg learned about the importance of family especially during christmas time i'm sorry you don't have more to open this year i'm good with what i got the truth is, I have everything I need right here. So I would say overall, when it comes to Diary of a Wimpy Kid Christmas Cabin Fever, I would say that I am genuinely surprised that this actually kind of came out pretty good. Um, yes, I know I said before that I came in with very low expectations and I did not really enjoy the previous animated Diary of a Whippy Kid movies, but I feel like this one not only uh, did it find a way to actually create this uh, pleasant Christmas special, but it also turned out to be what I could say so far is the best animated Diary of a Wimpy Kid movie, where it actually managed to get its formula more correct where we see the elements like uh, all the hijinks that would happen, the way that it's all elabor uh, elaborately connected to one another. That factor actually did manage to work. Uh, the humor, while not very humorous, it's actually pretty cute. It does, you know, add a little bit of charm. The characters, while not necessarily uh, that complex, they, they are pretty enjoyable in their own respective way. And even making characters that were despicable in the previous films but now can be a bit likable like Greg and I'll even add a little bit of Roderick as well and uh, even though the anime like the, the only one downside I would say is maybe like yeah the animation is still not that good but then again I could see that the team did put an effort to try to make the most out of it especially with the cinematography so 
overall, it's very much like your typical animated Diary of a Wimpy Kid movie, but it does add an extra layer where it does put in more work in order to be enjoyable. Now, I know that if you do take away the factor of Diary of a Wimpy Kid, you don't necessarily have all that much. Like, this really is just your typical Christmas special that is not that different whenever, like, a TV show would make some kind of special holiday episode or something like that. Like, there are, there are plenty of other movies, specials, episodes, and projects that they would do the same thing and they would uh, deliver the same kind of effect and deliberately with uh, better results on top of that in terms of their quality. I do understand, but it's just the, the surprising factor, at least for me, is that this definitely does feel like a step up from the previous two and that um, not only does it work as its own Christmas special with the way that it handles its message in a heartfelt way, but you could see how the Diary of a Wimpy Kid formula can actually work out in a, a more or less pretty effective way. Like, I, I, I'll, I'll even say this, like, technically... This is still considered the weakest of the uh, Disney animated films that they put out in 2023. Like, for me personally, I would still rather take something like uh, Elemental or Wish compared to uh, Cabin Fever. But still, though, as something that you would go and find on Disney+, Plus, and the fact that it's literally just an hour long, it's fine for what it is. And that's why I would recommend this for Diary of a Wimpy Kid fans. I think they're going to be the ones that will definitely get the most enjoyment out of it. Rather it be that you're a fan of the books or you grew up with the live action movies or you actually do enjoy the animated uh, Wimpy Kid movies, then I think you're going to be the ones who will have m the most of a good time with it. And as for me, I'm just going to say that Honestly, I don't necessarily see this as something that I'm going to be re-experiencing again. And especially this is not going to be the kind of movie where I feel like I got to go and add this as part of my tradition where every year I got to go on Disney Plus so that I got to check out Diary of a Wimpy Kid Christmas Cabin Fever. I can guarantee you that's not going to happen. But then again, I can honestly look back at this and actually feel uh, pleasant about it. You know, I can honestly look back and say like, yeah, you know, that actually did pretty okay. And that is why if I would go and give this a rating, um, considering that this is the best of the Diary of a Whippy Kid movies, um, I'm not going to go anything like too big, but I feel like the best rating to go with is a 6 out of 10. So honestly... It is, like, if you really are curious to go and check it out, of course, uh, don't set your expectations too high from it, but don't, don't expect anything that would be that bad either. And that is why when it comes to the future of these Diary of a Whippy Kid movies, because again, uh, I guess it, it looks like now it's official. It is going to be a tradition where every December, Disney is going to be putting out a brand new Diary of a Wimpy Kid animated movie on Disney+. Plus. Honestly, I don't know if this is going to be like something positive to look up to when it comes to the next batch of films that they could be making right now, especially with the fact that technically you could say that many of these improvements are because of the fact that it is Christmas. It's like a special exception in order to go and actually make these characters more charming, in order to make them more likable, and to really go and like set more focus on making the plans a lot more elaborate. I don't know if that is really going to be something that could continue. I wouldn't be surprised if the one for next year, they're going to go back to how it is like uh, or how it was like in Roderick Rules and it's going to be pretty crappy again. I don't know. But personally, I am hoping that maybe uh, the team can learn 
from their experience in here and that whatever they have improved upon with Cabin Fever that they can continue on forward. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if that's not the case, but that is something that I am hoping for that maybe for the next Diary of a Wimpykin movies, even though they can't necessarily do much with the animation itself, um, at least in terms of the writing and at least in terms of developing these characters, they can find a way to to go up from there. I don't know, but I guess we'll have to wait and see, and we'll have to wait until uh, the next uh, movie would go and come out. All right, so with that said and done, I would like to go and say thank you all so much for watching this, and also, if you had a great time watching this little review, or, well, maybe not little, because this thing is almost as long as the movie itself. <laughs> uh, but anyways, if you did enjoy this review, then don't forget to go and give this a like and subscribe to my channel, because I definitely do have a whole lot more videos coming, and I mean, uh, considering that the holidays are just around the corner, uh, I am almost done uh, going through the hectic of November and December, but I'll still have a lot more great things to go and uh, deliver to you all. So with all that said, I just would like to go and say happy holidays to you all. Uh, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, and uh, many, many more. And uh, hopefully you will have uh, a wonderful time with your loved ones. Uh, and uh, considering this is the holidays, this is the time of giving, and uh, well, considering Considering what we have experienced with Diary of a Whippy K Christmas Cabin Fever, it is important to note that, yes, you must go and make the most out of your time with the loved ones because nothing is permanent. So make sure that whatever moment or whatever time that you spend with them, uh, try to ensure that the memories that you'll have of those times are going to be very positive. And with all that said and done, I would like to say thank you all so much for watching. And uh, once again, happy holidays. And until next time, see you later, dudes. Really, Roderick? That's what you came up with? Well, I, uh, I'm still working out the details. <laughs>